So let's go to Ria Sajan. Ria? Yes. Nice backdrop. Okay, go ahead. Okay, let me share my screen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can y'all see it? Uh, yes. Okay, great. Um, hi, my name is Ria Sajan. Um, I go to Grapevine High School. I'm a sophomore and I live in Texas. Um, and I did my project on blue zones and how they can aid in neurodegenerative disease prevention. Okay, so the question that I was trying to answer is how could research on blue zones and like information that I get from blue zones um, help to reduce disparities in neurodegenerative disease diagnosis around the world? Um, and so blue zones, for anyone who doesn't know, are basically regions of the world that have um, very high life expectancies and like with that low neurodegeneration uh, disease rates. And so I thought that looking at what, how these areas are able to prevent neurodegeneration would help um, to figure out how other regions of the world could also try to get to that point. And so my uh, paper was basically like researching different aspects of lifestyles of people in blue zones and how um, those lifestyles could help other areas of the world. Um, so for my literary review, I mainly focused on three different um, like areas of study and each one I had a lot of sources for. So for the first one, like it was just in general, non-genetic causes of neurodegenerative diseases because non-genetic causes are things that people can like actually try to prevent versus genetic causes are a little bit harder to like do anything about. So first I went um like just to anthropogenic causes and lifestyles um, and how what people do every day can affect their likelihood of getting neurodegenerative diseases. So um, I went, I talked a little bit about nutrition um, and then the importance of like having healthy nutrition and a good amount, like quantity of food every day. Um, and then the importance of consistent exercise and the importance of sleep cycles. And I learned a lot about how um, insomnia can affect neurodegenerative diseases. And then I also talked about alcohol abuse and how that can also uh, cause uh, neurodegenerative diseases. And then also in the non-genetic causes, I talked about environmental causes and like the access people have to their environment that can lead to neurodegenerative diseases. And so I mainly focused on exposure to toxic heavy metals. Um, and so I talked a little bit about like specific ones in my paper. I didn't really get into it in this presentation, but I talked about mercury, lead and copper and how um, those are like neurotoxins and some people working in areas like such as mining areas or um, manufacturing sites that might have more exposure to these metals could also have um, a higher chance of getting neurodegenerative diseases. Um, and then the second thing that I focused on was diseases in blue zones specifically, because that's like my whole topic is about seeing how blue zones could be researched to affect the rest of the world. Um, and so while I was researching um, neurodegenerative diseases in blue zones, I was looking at how they have significantly low rates in neurodegenerative diseases, like I mentioned before. And a couple of the reasons I found for that is one, um, a lot of these regions have a highly vegetarian diet. Um, and I researched a little bit about how red meat can also be uh, bad for cognitive health. And then people in these areas often also get consistent exercise. Um, and then those are just a couple of things that I have a little bit more extensive research in my paper. Um, and then I also researched um, how in the past, blue zones have worked to improve neurodegenerative disease rates in other areas of the world. Um, so I actually saw this one um, article and it was talking about how blue zones uh, helped an area in California um, to improve Alzheimer's rates and like reduce the number of people getting Alzheimer's every year. And that shows that the research that's being done in blue zones and the lifestyle that's being done in blue zones is being recognized for helping against neurodegenerative diseases. And they're actually effectively being able to help other areas of the world get to where they are. Um, and then the third thing that I researched is just in general, like using my um, knowledge about the causes of neurodegenerative diseases, plus 
how blue zones are able to re prevent them. I did like an overall neurodegenerative disease prevention area, and I talked a little bit about that. Um, and so the main things I talked about was um, having a Mediterranean diet, what is known for um, being good for nutrition, because there's a lot of fruits and vegetables and nuts, um, and those are all good for like nutrition wise, um, preventing neurodegenerative diseases. Um, also, just avoiding ultra processed foods. And that's really important, especially today, because um, fast foods are like a lot cheaper usually than other foods. And so people often go to them, but they might not realize the impact that that could be having on their cognitive health. And so that's something I focused on as well. Um, and then also maintaining a healthy food quantity. Um, I did research a little bit about how um, having a low BMI can affect your chances of getting neurodegenerative diseases. So it's important to maintain a healthy quantity of food. Um, and then I also talked about getting consistent physical exercise. And like I mentioned before, avoiding areas with toxic metal exposure. So now for my methodology and results. Um, so for my methodology, I created a diverse and objective primary literature review. So I looked at um, a lot of like research papers and statistics and put it all together to sort of come up with a blueprint of how blue zones are able to prevent neurodegenerative diseases and the overall things that other areas of the world can do based on that to prevent it. Um, and then my significant findings, I feel like the one big thing that I realized is that although a lot of neurodegenerative diseases and a lot of cases are caused by genetics, there are a lot of things people can do on their day-to-day -day lives to at least lessen their risk of getting neurodegenerative disease um, diseases. And so I feel like that binding is what kind of drove me to look for specific ways that people can do that. Because I feel like if a lot of people knew about the things they could be doing to uh, maintain their cognitive health, they would actually put that into consideration for their own lifestyle. And then here are my results. I have this picture that I created on the right. Um, and so uh, around this is just like the different uh, things that I found that could prevent neurodegenerative diseases. So there's consistent sleep schedules, uh, reduced alcohol consumption, no smoking, maintain a healthy BMI, all the things that I've been talking about. And so I created this figure and this figure is also in my research paper. Um, and so for my conclusion, I, I would say that my research uh, contributes to science because it combats the disparities in neurodegenerative disease diagnosis around the world by providing individuals with prevention resources. Because now that I've kind of compiled all of this information together, I think this paper could be a good way for uh, people to like see what they can do to be preventing um, their own diagnosis of neurodegenerative disease. And right now there's a lot of different varied rates of neurodegenerative disease around the world. So I think this is a good way to try to bring everyone to the level that blue zones are at right now. And then this also compiles data from a diverse set of sources to create an effective summary for individuals looking for a straightforward blueprint for neurodegenerative disease prevention. Um, and then for limitations, I did have a lot of sources that I included, but I definitely did not consider every possible viewpoint. Uh, and so it's also probably important to consider that some of the um, prevention methods I talked about might not be possible for some people and things like that. So I think I could have gone a little bit more into depth with that. Um, and also not all of my research may apply to populations around the entire world. And that's kind of important because what I was talking about is like reducing disparities around the entire world. So if it only applies to certain populations, it might not be as applicable, but I did try to make it as globally um, necessary as possible. And then also there was not a ton of pre-existing research on neurodegenerative disease rates in blue zones. Um, I found a lot about their life expectancies and their habits and things like that. So it was a little difficult to uh, put all of this information together, but I did what I could with what I could find. And then I think a lot of future research could be done based on this research paper. Um, like I said before, maybe exploring a little bit more specifically into each prevention method and um, seeing how that could be used in specific regions of the world rather than like generally globally. Um, and then I also think that actual experiments can be conducted to verify these conclusions and get more statistics about this paper in general. And then for my research experience, I would like to thank Dr. Varki. Um, I learned a lot about the basics of neurology and neurodegenerative diseases during uh, my research and during our meetings. Um, and it was a great foundation for the future research I did. And it was like great to learn about all of these different diseases um, throughout the 
presentations because I was able to kind of apply that information in my research about resumes. Um, and then for, for Professor Virgil, I'm very thankful for all the help with formatting and editing this paper. And um, he really provided a lot of like effective and constructive feedback and helped me with my citations and things like that. Um, I've done sort of similar things to this paper before, but never scientifically. So it was, I didn't really know how that would work in like a scientific paper. And he was able to help me a lot with that. Um, and then throughout this experience, I learned a lot about time management because the literature review is very time consuming. And so it was important to pace myself and not try to do it all at once. Um, and so that was important. And then just professional writing in general. And then with the presentations we did during um, Professor Virgil's sessions where we talked about our presentation, that was a great way to like get communication skills and things like that. And then I had a lot of exciting experiences uh, during this paper and that included sharing the information at our weekly meetings and then just gathering the information. It was really interesting to read all of these different articles and like compare them and see how they work together. All right, thank you. Great job, uh, Ria. A uh, wonderful paper and the depth at which uh, you've gone. It's pretty amazing. So Dr. Varki, uh, please ask your question. Excellent presentation, Ria. Uh, very comprehensive one. So you have like added quite a bit of information uh, into your presentation. And uh, again, like a very timely presentation as well with perspectives on a number of neurodegenerative diseases, the individuals with neurodegenerative diseases that are going up. And um, so a question for you, like, uh, did you also look into the socioeconomic aspect uh, while considering uh, how that might also affect uh, the people who have neurodegeneration within this blue zone? So. Um, actually, I would say that's something I didn't really consider as much, but I do think that's something that's important, um, especially like because socioeconomic status can be like different in different areas of the world and that can be very important. So I do think that I can probably consider that and even um, add that to my paper in the future. Okay, yeah. And also like uh, there's some, uh, so in the same line, something that you might want to consider uh, adding would be that if you, um, uh, you know, like take the socioeconomic aspect and like then consider how even people who do not have the, uh, in like resources, financial resources, as it, but still can uh, have diet, you know, like kind of, you know, like you tailor the diet for people who mm -hmm. can't afford uh, expensive stuff. So yeah. which can help in your degeneration, something which can be a contribution from your end. Yeah, that sounds good. And I can talk about, like I talked about um, reducing fast food consumption, but then fast food is like generally cheaper. So a lot of people like it. Maybe I can like try to find a way to balance that and see what I can do. Yes. Okay, thank okay. you. Good job. A big round of applause. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Varki, for giving individual recommendations and point of view. Thank you very much for all your efforts in uh, mentoring and guiding these students. Wouldn't be possible you. without you. <laughs>